Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Ringo TV Reactions. We're back again with another one. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Let's get down to business. So, we're reviewing Christopher Duncan. Yeah, that's right. Christopher Duncan. You might know him as Braxton from the Jamie Foxx show. Well, Mr. Duncan pretty much proved that the industry is hiding the truth about Jamie Foxx being cloned and more. You see, his facial expression says it all. He know that he can't share the secrets because if he do, it's, it's a wrap. He's one of those actors that never really had a fair shot. And he's trying his best to play by the rules. He don't want to step on nobody's toes. He don't want to offend the elite because he know about the oath. He know about the blood sacrifices. And he also knows about what happened to Jamie. Now, in this particular interview, he's going to act like he don't know. This is what he's going to do. He's going to act like he don't know what's going on. He's going to act as if though he's in support. He's going to be sympathetic he's going to try to make it seem like whatever's wrong with Jamie is none of our business but yet they're doing interviews to talk about it but it's none of our business let it make sense his facial expression shows the pain of a man that is in captivity in the industry and there are many actors just like Mr. Duncan many they're unable to speak. In my last stream, I asked the question, why haven't we heard about any high profile actors visiting Jamie Foxx? Especially after hearing all the stories. You would think that good friends would want to visit their friend, especially in their final moments. But we haven't heard anything. Because when you're a part of the satanic industry, there are certain rules you must abide by. And if you don't, you get deleted. You know, we find you in a hotel room with a gunshot wound to your head. With a note claiming that you were stressed, had a hard time, so you decided to check out. You know, or we find you in a car wreck. And uh, the cause of the death is normally because there was some sort of drugs in your system. Uh, the elite love to use uh, self-deletion as a method. Um, they may say that you had some sort of fentanyl in your system, some sort of, you may have OD'd. This is typically the MO of the elite. When they do a blood sacrifice and they pack you up and get you up on out of here, it's normally you either OD'd, uh, self-deleted, right? Or it was just like a tragic crash whether it's a helicrap, hel helicopter crash like the late Kobe and his daughter which was also a blood sacrifice we still haven't even talked about that we have to get on that um, or a car crash plane crash whatever the case is they're normally all blood sacrifices Aaliyah you know um, you know plane crashes uh, who else died in a in a, in a uh, you know plane crash um, you got various car crashes, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure what what was the cause of the uh, death of Left Eye. What, what what was the cause of Left Eye? Was it a was it a car? I think it was a car crash, right? I think it was a car crash with with Left Eye, where I think she was the only one that died. Um, and I think everybody else survived, or or something along those lines. I got to look into it. Um, maybe one person I also died with her. I'm not sure, but. Based on what I'm just thinking off the top of my head, she was the only one that died. I don't know. We, we have to do some more research on it. But my point is, it's normally always that. 
you know, you get shot, you know, like Biggie, Tupac. It's, it's all the same M.O. So if you look at Mr. Duncan's face, um, yeah, uh, Paul Walker, d- there you go. Car, car death. All of these actors, it's always the same. They, they have to do it the same way because it's easy to explain to the public. You know what I mean? They, they killed him because he wanted a better deal. This is what a lot of people don't understand. He wanted a better deal when it comes to the franchise. He wanted a better deal. He wanted more money. He was asking for too much. They said, no, we can't do it. He's like, well, I'm going to have to walk. Well, we're going to take you out. We're going to have to take you out. What do you mean you're not going to do no more films? You're under contract. See, we never actually went into the full video when talking about Paul Walker. We're going to have to do that. There's a lot of videos I got to cover, a lot of stories that happen, and I got to give my thoughts on what went wrong. But in his situation, it had a lot to do with the fact that he wanted more money. He, he felt that he was being shortchanged. And he felt uh, he's the face of the franchise. I mean, who don't know that Paul Walker's like the main guy? But we're going to deal with that another time. Because in Hollywood, all actors have a gag order against them where they can't talk. Because if they do... It's impending death. Family going to be missing. They're going to be out of a job. Uh, They're not going to get no uh, work in Hollywood. And people like Mr. Duncan and various other actors are just barely on threads. You know, barely surviving. I'm talking about like they're just barely making it because this is all they do. This is their livelihood, you know. So we're going to we're going to visit. His thoughts, we're going to get into his mind, try to figure out what's going on. And we're going to also learn that Mr. Duncan proved that the industry is hiding. That's right. They're hiding. They're hiding Jamie's situation. They don't want nobody to talk about it. They don't want nobody to visit Jamie. They don't want nobody to be around him because they all know. We're going to look at his body language. We're going to examine the fear that's upon him. We got to look at these things. So again, as you tune in, be sure to click the like button. We need to have the views and the likes matching at all times. It's very important. You got to do your part, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot do this by myself. If you're not supporting the work, it don't go nowhere. But you're going to be supporting Jamie's film. When it released on Netflix, you're going to definitely support. I know a lot of you are going to be hypocrites. You're going to still go watch the film. You're going to do it. I know you're going to do it because that's how you are. You support that which is wicked. But the people that's putting in the work trying to make you see the truth, you don't support them. I shouldn't have to ask you to click the like button. It should be automatic. Look at all the work I've done. Look at all the videos I've covered regarding the Jamie Foxx situation. And you tell me. Where on YouTube have you seen anybody break down these stories like me? Nobody. Nobody. Because they can't. It's not in them to do it. It's not their job. See, what you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is some people are called and chosen to do this job called and chosen whereas other people they just try to do it because you know they just want to make a dollar but it's not in them to do it they don't have the ability to do it so they'll look at me see what I do and then they try to mimic it those are the clones those are the AI content creators they just kind of copy whatever they see you know So Mr. Duncan's facial expression, fam, is showing the pain of I got to be very careful what I say in this interview because I don't want to turn up missing. I know what's happening to Jamie is a result of his contract that he made with the devil. I know, but I can't speak on it because Mr. Duncan also sold his soul. These are just the facts, people. You got to understand in Hollywood, this is how it goes down. 
You have to sell your soul. He knows what happened to Jamie. He's fully aware of it. You can see it in his eyes. Body language, don't lie. So, let's get this video ready so we can break this thing down and hopefully you'll walk away with some information on what's happening here, right? So let me tune up this volume, make sure everything is right. Okay. Da, 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 da. Um, this particular interview is coming out of Comedy Hype, I believe it is. Comedy Hype, right? And um, they had like two, two interviews with uh, Mr. Duncan. And we're going to review this. See what he's, what he's talking about, what's going on with him. Because we want to know what's going on with Jamie. We want to know who's hiding it. Is the industry behind it? What's going on? Is Netflix behind it? What's going on? Why the key players in Hollyweird are not talking about this? How many months went by? We haven't heard no celebrities talk about Jamie. They're not doing no interviews. Nobody's questioning nothing. What's the secrecy? What's, what's happening? Let's find out what he got to say. For taking the uh, time out to come speak with me today. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here, Don. Definitely. So how are you doing? All is well. Um, life is good. My family's healthy and they're all well and happy. So... That's what matters most to me. Of course, that's what matters most to you. That's why you're not going to speak about the secrets. See, he says that his family is good and that's what's more most important to him. Because he know the deal that he made. Everybody got to make that deal in Hollywood. And, and when, they, when they ask him these questions, you have to understand the elite is actually speaking to him see a lot of these platforms on youtube I, i've been trying to teach this for a long time everybody that's on youtube right is not the same and i'm speaking of the same in terms of the team they play for you got a lot of platforms that are part of the elite system they're a part of the beast they're a part of the powers that be and they have to interview certain people in order to push a narrative to push their agenda to shape public opinion. So when you see these large platforms with mega, mega millions of amounts of subscribers and number one, they don't rep the most high, right? They never teach anybody any truth, right? Those platforms work for the beast. So when they have Mr. Duncan on, you got to think about this. How did they even get to have him on? How did they even go about doing an interview with him? How did that even go about? You know? Think about that. What's really going on? So when we review these videos, we have to think about what's happening here. And what is he afraid of? Why he don't want to speak the truth. Let's go. And that's all I'm, we ever want. I'm working. Got to keep that going. So. Right. Yeah. All this Notice he said, I'm working and got to keep that going. How do you keep that going? By not breaking the oath. By not stepping on anybody's toes in the industry. All is well. No Especially complaints. Especially in these times. <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. I did want to talk to you about um, your time on the Jamie Foxx show as well as your career. Um, there is no way to talk about the show without talking about the man himself. And, you know, we all know the condition that he's in, unfortunately. Mm. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's upsetting. It's really, I remember looking at my wife and. Now think about what he just said right there. We got to pause for a minute. We got to, we got to unpack that. Nobody know for certain what happened to Jamie Foxx. Nobody could come out and say uh, his medical emergency was this happened to him because we heard no doctors speak. Jamie never told us what happened. You know, nobody told us exactly what happened to Jamie, but look at how he's talking though. He's talking as if though he heard some bad news. L l just, just look at him. Matters most to me. Yeah, that's all I'm, we ever want. I'm working. Got to keep that going. So right. Yeah, all is, all is well. No Especially complaints. Especially in these times. <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I did want to talk to you about um, your time on the Jamie Foxx show as well as your career. Um, there is no way to talk about the show without talking about the man himself. And, you know, we all know the condition that he's in, unfortunately. Mm. We all know about the conditions he's in. Notice he just, listen, the host said we all know about the condition he's in. What condition? <laughs> what condition? What condition is Jamie in? The condition is he was cloned. Because what, what's the point of having the sad face, Mr. Duncan? Look at his face. Check him out. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's upsetting. It's really How could it be upsetting if you don't even know what's wrong with him? How could, how could it be upsetting if you don't even know what happened to him? Yeah, most people pray for, prayed for a clone. That's right. That's right. See, Mr. Duncan knows exactly what happened to Jamie. He's just refusing to talk about it because if he do, he's going to end up uh, in a compromising situation. See, a lot of people in Hollywood, they know how to play the game. It's like when you see uh, Jay-Z talk. If you notice, his, he, he speaks very few words. You don't see him talking much at all. You know what I mean? A lot of actors are like that. They don't talk too much. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't say anything because they cannot share the secrets. They'll be, they'll be packed up. They'll be out of here, man. You know, he said it's upsetting and all this other stuff. How if you don't know what happened to him? Really, I remember looking at my wife and I realized, of course, as everyone at this point, that it's, it's a very serious situation. What situation? What situation, Mr. Duncan, is so serious? He said it's a serious situation. He said he looked at his wife and he said everybody knows it's a serious situation. Well, what's the situation? He just said that he had a medical emergency. What exactly is happening to him? Look at his face. Come on, yeah. And remember, he's an actor. So, you know, actors know how to act. Right? They could be very dramatic. When I first heard about it, I thought, okay, I know this is a stressful business. Uh-oh. And especially on the level that Jamie's dealing with it in terms of so many different projects. He's at that A-level in films. A-level actor, Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is an A-level actor. He's, he's working with big films. Think about this. And, and if he's friends with Jamie, how come he don't visit him at the hospital? What friend don't come up there with some flowers and, hey, buddy, hey, you know, just checking in on you, see how you're doing. What's going on? Let's rewind that back a little bit. It's, it's a very serious situation. Mm. When I first heard about it. When he first heard about it. Uh-oh. When he first heard about it. Heard about what? That he had a medical emergency or that he was cloned? I thought, okay, I know this is a stressful business. So, you, so you're admitting that Hollywood is a stressful business. See how he just admit that? He just admitted that Hollywood is a stressful business. Think about it. Stressful to the point where you have medical emergencies. And especially on the level that Jamie's dealing with it in terms of so many different projects. He's at no, 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 Mr. Duncan. Not about how many projects. You said it in the beginning. Let's let's rewind it back. You said you said exactly what it is. Let's let's hear you say it. I know this is a stressful business. And especially on the level that on the level. On the level what? Jamie's dealing with it. On the level that Jamie's dealing with. You see that? On the level that Jamie is dealing with. See, J Jamie is an A-list actor in Hollywood, dealing with big films. 
he he worked with big actors. You know what I'm saying? The movers and the shakers. And he already done been cloned and took the blood sacrifice oath. So he knows about it. Mr. Duncan know what kind of level he's on. In terms of so many different projects, he's at that A level in films. The level that you're not on, Mr. Duncan. Because Holly Weird put you on the bench. Holly Weird didn't want to give you those roles. Holly Weird did not see Mr. Duncan as the one that they can use to execute their agenda. But they chose Jamie Foxx, not you. We're going to learn more about his uh, his difficulties in Holly Weird. There's a lot of weight to that. So uh -oh. I figured when I first heard about it, okay, this is stress stress related. So hold up. So you thought it was stress related. So you're speculating like everybody else. So you felt that Jamie Foxx's medical emergency was stress related. What else we got? That was my assumption. I didn't know about any details or whatever. I, I, I still don't. But You still don't? He said he didn't know about any details, and he still don't. He said he didn't know about any details. What details? Because nobody don't know about any details. And he, then he stressed, I still don't. Why he's saying that? Because he want the elite to know that he's not out here running his mouth. Listen to him. Um, that's what I thought. But then as time was moving on. Oh, as time was moving on. So as time was moving on. Really? Let's go. You know, a lot of people are speculating. Just like you just finished speculating. You just said it. you thought it was stress related. Hypocrite. Let's hear him say that again. There's a lot of weight to that. So I figured when I first heard about it, okay, this is stress, stress related. That was my assumption. I didn't know about any details or whatever. I, I, I still don't. But, um, that's what I thought, but then as time was moving on, you know, a lot of people are speculating. I mean, you hear every kind of possibility out there. Some people think it's a, a conspiracy theory that people are out to kill him. And, you know, some people are saying it's the vaccine. I mean, there are all these different theories, but the bottom line is none of that stuff matters. What? None of that stuff matters? What? So hold up, Mr. Duncan, hold on, wait a minute. Um, respectfully, sir, you're saying that if we speculate on what we may think possibly happened to Jamie, that none of that stuff matters. So you don't want to hear the truth. Oh, I get it. I get it. That's because you took the oath too. So you mean if people make content alluding to the possibility that they're trying to kill Jamie Foxx, that that's not important. If I talk about they clone Jamie Foxx, that's not important. If we speculate on why he haven't come out into the public to share any sort of news, to thank his audience, to say, hey, guys, appreciate the prayers, you know, none of that matters. But it's okay for you to assume and speculate that it may be stress-related that's perfectly okay, as long as you say it. This is how you know, ladies and gentlemen, that Mr. Duncan is on the payroll of the elite. And shout out to BK all day for the 499. Appreciate the support, fam. Said, bro, always giving us the truth. Straight dope content. Salute, fam. BK in the building all day. Mr. Duncan just told us that none of our thought processes matter, fam. Let's hear what he said again, man. Listen. Every kind of possibility out there. Some people think it's a, a conspiracy theory that people are out to kill him. And, you know, some people are saying it's the vaccine. I mean, there are all these different theories, but the bottom line is none of that stuff matters. Wow. So when AJ Benza came out in the public and told us that 
Jamie pretty much is in the hospital paralyzed. AJ Benza came out and told us that, fam. We did a whole live show about it. AJ Benza was on the Dr. Drew channel. And in this one hour and 12 minute stream, we broke down the interview. And uh, I think we only use audio. I don't think I would use the video. But uh, we broke down the audio version. The video is on YouTube. I just didn't want to put it in my live show for various reasons. But AJ Benza claimed that he knew and got information from somebody in the medical facility where Jamie Foxx stayed that said, and this is coming from AJ Benza, that the person, the insider, tipped him off and said that Jamie Foxx is paralyzed have blood clots and partially blind so how did jamie fox go from that to playing golf riding on a yacht saving a woman's purse when he's supposed to be partially blind having blood clots and you know, can't walk. How, how did that happen? So who did we see in all those videos? What's going on? Because based on AJ Benza, and this is his words, fam, you can go look it up on the platform. AJ Benza said that in the filming of the, of the movie that Jamie was involved in, I think it's called uh, Back in Action, that it was required by the film company or whoever's on, on set that Jamie had to get the potion sauce in terms of the injection for the so-called pandemic situation. Y'all know, y'all know what it is. Do not post any words, any V words, any J words or any that, any of that, or else you're going to just get blocked. You want to use a syringe you use that. If you want to get slick thinking you're going to try to play some games, I'm just going to block you because I have no time to play games. We talk about this in every stream. When you post those words, you're triggering the algorithm. You're triggering all of the cyber bots that something is going on over here that we're having a discussion about the so-called potion sauce. That's not what my content is about. Because on social media now, they got all these strict guidelines that they don't want nobody talking about these things, which is sick because there's a lot of information I would love to bring to you. When I tell you, fam, I got some info that if I was to put those videos out, I won't have a channel no more. I promise you, I wouldn't have a channel no more if I put that info out, fam. And, and they're definitely watching me to make sure that I don't. I can't even do that on a private site. That's how deep it, that's how deep the rabbit hole goes, fam. It's crazy out here. But let's get back to the tapes. See what he's saying. What matters is that Jamie heals fully. Wow. Heal from what, Mr. Duncan? You said that none of the stuff matters, but what matters is that Jamie Foxx heal. Heal from what? What is wrong with him that he needs to heal? Because everybody's out here praying for him, praying to Jesus for him to be healed. Healed from what? And that he can get back to working his magic. What? Exactly. Because that's what he does. Oh, man. Get back to what? Hold on. So why not back? You know, some people are saying it's the vaccine. I mean, there are all these different theories, but the bottom line is none of that stuff matters. Okay. What matters? Ma what matters? Is that Jamie heals. Heals for what? Fully. Fully, okay. And that he can get back to working his magic. Working what? Exactly. Because that's what he does. Working his magic. Ah, oh, man. Oh, boy, man. Working his magic. Do you see what goes on in Holly Weird? This is what goes on, fam. 
When they do these shows, these movies, it's magic, man. These guys are magicians. This is what they do. Keep you under spells, man. Magic. He said it himself, man. I didn't make that up. He just said getting back to what he do, which is magic. Listen. Back to working his magic. Exactly. Because that's what he does. Wow, it's right there in plain sight. Shout out to Pat McLovin for the 19. Says respect to the hard work. Ringo. Keep it coming. Appreciate the support. Salute. Sponsoring the show. So you heard it yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Jamie Foxx specialize in magic listen to that again let's go heals fully fully and that he can get back to working his magic exactly because that's what he does wow so that's that is what matters to me definitely not all these different oh, oh no i think it's this no no you're wrong i think it none of us really know <laughs> none of our business either <laughs> That's the thing. So hold up. So let me get this straight. So you you two gentlemen are having an interview, uh, a conversation about Jamie, and then you're going to say, well, it's none of our business. Well, if it's none of our business, then why are y'all having an interview for? Why are they having an interview talking about Jamie if it's none of our business? Why? Listen to this, because this is how you know that the elite is using Mr. Duncan. See, Mr. Duncan know that the elite called him up. Let me tell you what happened, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happened. The elite contacted Mr. Duncan and said, we need you for a starring role. What starring role, sir? We need for you to go out there and do some damage control in an interview so that the people can believe you. We're going to give you a star and role to act in. Okay, I'll do it. Well, you better do it, because if you don't, you already don't know what's going to happen. And they paid him to go on this show to do this interview. That's what happened, fam. Listen carefully to this mess. Because that's what he does. So that's, that is what matters to me. Definitely. Not all these different, oh, oh no, I think it's this. No, no, you're wrong. I think it... None of us really know. None of our business either. <laughs> That's the thing. He said it's none of our business and none of us really know. So if none of us really know what happened to Jamie, why are y'all talking about it? And why are you so upset with everybody else that give their theory? I thought this is America. Land of the free, home of the brave. That's what I, that's what I thought it was. You know? I thought that in America you can think out loud and think outside the box. So you're basically saying, Mr. Duncan, by me sharing my commentary, that it don't matter. So I just supposed to go along with the get along gang and just be a robot like everybody else. No, that's not what we're going to do over here. We're going to teach. We're going to speculate. We're going to do some research. We're going to uh, do our proper analysis on what's going on. And we're going to also expose the industry for what it really is, because Mr. Duncan, you're showing a lot of signs of a man that has a gun to his head. It seems like somebody threatened you in order for you to do this interview. It seemed like you were forced to do this interview. It don't seem like it came from the heart. You know? Yeah, he's under contract with the elite. Definitely. Um, Shout out to Deborah for the super chat, $50 super chat. Says, uh, Ringo, you are the best hands down when it comes to these YouTube, these YouTube. Thank you. Love. One. Salute. You always bring in that fire. Appreciate you sponsoring the show. Appreciate the love and support. So it's very evident and clear that uh, Mr. Duncan is under contract with the powers that be. He realized that his mission at this point is... He have to convince the viewer that it's none of our business. 
So what what exactly is he saying? Well, essentially what Mr. Duncan is doing here is he's using reverse psychology. In other words, it's none of your business what's wrong with Jamie. So don't listen to anybody like Ringo TV reactions. Don't listen to him because it's none of his business. Right. Don't listen to none of these content creators that might have a valid point. Don't listen to none of them because none of them really know that's his job to shape public opinion. That's his job. Mr. Duncan know what happened to Jamie. He understand the rituals. He understand the system. If he ever was to turn against the elite, he won't be here no more. He knows that. Everybody in Hollywood knows that. This is why nobody has visited Jamie Foxx yet. Name me one celebrity that actually went and visited Jamie Foxx. Who? Nobody, because nobody could. They're under contract with the elite. They don't want nothing to leak out there to the public. People ask me every day now. Uh-oh, so hold up, wait a minute. People are coming to Mr. Duncan, asking him every day about Jamie Foxx. What, what's going on with Jamie? What happened? Uh-oh. I explained to them, I don't know. That's a lie. You do know. I can see it in your face, sir. I can see it in your face that you do know. You do know. You do know. You just can't say what it is. And I get it. Respectfully, I understand. You took the oath. You're under contract. A breach in the contract would be a conflict of interest, right? And it would result in your termination. I get it. But the body language don't lie, Mr. Duncan. I can see it all over you. You're scared. I get it. Anybody would be afraid. But it's sad that you know what happened to Jamie and you're not speaking on it. And you're in an interview. I mean, you look very nervous looking at this brother as he interview you because he most likely is a part of the industry. And this is what they do. They put you in the hot seat. You got to do the interview, even though you don't want to do it. But you got to do it. You know, that's a part of the deal. If you don't do it, we, we come in for your family. They're going to end up into some accident somewhere. This is what they do. You know, let's go. And here's the thing, because I don't know. But no, even notice, if I did. Notice how he keeps saying, I don't know. Now watch what he say here, fam. What he's about to say here, what he's about to say here, fam, prove that Mr. Duncan knows what happened to Jamie and he is hiding it because the industry is hiding it. Listen carefully. And here's the thing, because I don't know. But even if I did, Dom, hypothetically, let's say I, I knew, but I do not. But if I did, I wouldn't say a word about it. Wow. 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 Say it ain't so, Mr. Duncan. So you mean to tell me, Mr. Duncan, with all the fans of Jamie Foxx, respectfully, Jamie Foxx have a lot of fans. You know, a lot of people got love for Jamie. Um, Jamie Foxx is very talented. Um, you know, good actor. You can't take that away from him. I mean, the man is gifted. You know? At the same time, to hear Mr. Duncan say that even if he knew what happened to Jamie, he wouldn't say anything. That's proof on how the industry work. They know what happened, but they're not saying what happened. Boom. Ain't that something? That's crazy, man. Shout out to Brandon Turner for the membership. Salute. So you heard it first. First hand, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Duncan, a.k.a. Braxton from the Jamie Foxx show. Because when I think of this brother in terms of Mr. Duncan, I only remember him from Jamie Foxx show. Respectfully. You know? I, I just can't recall another movie he'd been in. Maybe he was in other films. I don't know. 
I, I just don't know. All I remember him from is the Jamie Foxx show. And he's going to talk about that a little later, which is kind of interesting because it seems as if though Holly Weird um, been blocking him from progressing in the industry. It seemed like they've been holding him back. And this is what they do to a lot of actors, you know. Um, Let me see. Somebody said he was on a movie original gangsters i'm gonna do more background checks on him find out what other films he was in because i want to know exactly uh his um portfolio in hollywood to see how like what level he's on because he seemed to be very timid in this interview very nervous he's choosing his words wisely he uh said multiple times that i don't know what happened to jamie he, he said it about three times if i'm correct he said it about three times that he don't know what happened to jamie right let's play that back not all these different oh, oh no i think it's this no no you're wrong i think it none of us really know none of our business either <laughs> that's the thing if it's none of our business then y'all should just shut down the interview i shouldn't even be talking if it's none of our business what are you what are you trying to say and I'm speaking to the host now. If it's none of our business since you said that, you're basically saying that nobody should care. So if Jamie Foxx died right now, then who cares? That's basically what you just said. If it's, not, if it's none of our business, then why is it our business that people are praying for Jamie Foxx? If it's none of our business. If what happened to Jamie Foxx is none of our business, why are the family and his friends asking the public to pray for him. Y'all treating his fans like trash, man. And this is why I keep saying, you folks out there in the public, you have the power. You have the power. Jamie Foxx is not who he is because he just talented. You make him who he is. There's a lot of talented people in the world that don't get no shine. A lot of talented people that get no recognition. It's just so happen. Jamie Foxx has been recognized. The industry brought him in to the elite and they pushed him. Just like when you have whack music on the radio and they push that garbage and next minute it's at the top of the charts. And before you know it, everybody want to bump that in their car. Let's go. People ask me every day now. Who's asking you every day? Who are the people that are asking you every day, Mr. Duncan? Because... People are coming to you asking, but you're not telling. Why? Because you're a part of the elite. You can't tell them. Check it out. What, what's going on with Jamie? What happened? I explained to them, I don't know. Wow. So you, you're explaining the people that's coming to you. Now, I know, Mr. Duncan, the people that are coming to you are not the common citizen that is out here in the world. The people that are coming to Mr. Duncan for information are people that may be affiliated with the industry. Right? But they're not as deep in as Mr. Duncan and the likes of Jamie Foxx. And they're secretly coming to Mr. Duncan for the inside information because they're like, Mr. Duncan, you know Jamie Foxx. Come on. Tell us what happened to him, man. What happened to Jamie Foxx? You, you should know, bro. What happened to him, Mr. Duncan? Come on. I know you speak to him direct. I know you got his phone. I know he got your number. I know he met your family. I probably had dinner. Come on. If there's anybody that got to know something, Mr. Duncan, it got to be you. And, and what, do he, what do he tell these people? What's going on with Jamie? What happened? I explained to them, I don't know. Wow. And here's the thing, because I don't know. But even if I did, Dom, uh -oh. hypothetically, let's say I, I knew, but I do not. Wow. But if I did, I wouldn't say a word about it. Wow. Because it's private family business. Private family business, y'all. He said... Jamie Foxx medical emergency is private family business. And if he knew what it was, he wouldn't tell nobody. He's telling the elite right here that he promised to submit to the oath 
and would never break it. That's what he's doing. So basically, all of you fans of Jamie Foxx that really, really cared, that prayed for him, that wished for him to, to have full recovery or whatever the case is, Mr. Duncan is saying that even if he knew what happened, he wouldn't even tell you. So if he know Jamie was cloned, he's not going to tell you. If he know Jamie passed away already, he's not going to tell you. If he know Jamie Foxx may have been murdered or there was an attempt to murder him, he wouldn't tell you. Why? Because if he say a word, the elite is going to take him out. Because at the end of the day, end of the day, Jamie's not just an incredible entertainer on so many different levels. He's a dad. Uh-oh. He's a dad. Now, what exactly is he doing here? Being sentimental, emotional. He's a dad. Oh, he's a dad. As if though he got some little baby somewhere. No, his daughter don't even speak on his behalf right now. He's trying to tap into your emotions to make you feel sorry. Like, it's none of our business. We shouldn't be talking about it. We shouldn't be speculating. We should just all be praying. He's a close friend to those friends he has in his circle. Uh-oh, in his circle. The elite. The powers that be. The rituals. The oath. The blood sacrifices. Jamie has a circle that he's in. The circle with the satanic star. Get it? Star. The star that's on Hollywood. On the ground. The star that they give celebrities. That's the satanic star. He just said Jamie Foxx is in that circle. And he have a circle of friends. But notice his circle of friends have not visited him in the hospital yet. Notice that. Put it together, y'all. Think about what's happening here. Mr. Duncan took the oath, y'all. He's showing all the signs of someone. Look at his face, man. You can't see his face. His face is showing that he know what happened. Listen to what he said. Bull entertainer on so many different levels. He's a dad. He's a close friend to those friends he has in his circle. So where are those friends to come look for him in the hospital? We haven't heard nothing from those close friends. He's a son. He's a son. All this emotional stuff. All this emotional stuff. He's using his acting abilities at this point, fam. I mean, you know, we're talking about private, meaningful family business. Private, meaningful family business. Private meaningful family business. This looked like a scene from a movie. Mr. Duncan, what a great performance. Wow. What a great performance. I am, I am totally amazed. That was a brilliant scene, fam. Don't it look like we were just watching a movie clip and he's doing a great acting scene? Because that's what it is right there. I could read him. He's, he's doing an acting scene right there. So even if I did know, uh oh, I wouldn't say a word. Wow. Even if I did know, I won't say a word. Wow. And this is exactly what Hollywood is doing right now. Hollywood is not saying nothing about Jamie Foxx. They keeping this one under wraps, man. Something happened on the set of Back in Action that only those that were there know. And, and think about this. If Jamie Foxx, now, now listen to me carefully, fam. If Jamie Foxx had a medical emergency on the set of Back in Action, you're going to tell me nobody caught it on tape? You're going to tell me nobody had their cell phone out? Of course they did. But being that everybody on set is under contracts, they cannot release anything to the public. I'm pretty sure they have it on tape. People recorded on their cell phone, everything. 
and they saw something that was out of this world. They saw something that scared them. Something happened. And we'll never know about it because when you're in that fraternity and you take that ritual, it's for life, man. There's no way out of it but through death. Let's go. I wouldn't. And that's very appreciative, especially from his side as well. Wow. The host said he's a, that's very appreciative because knowing that you won't say nothing, even if you knew. Why the secrecy? Why the secrecy, Mr. Duncan? You don't even know what happened to him, but you're saying if you did know, you won't say nothing. That's crazy. What's so bad about what happened to Jamie? That's how bad it is, ladies and gentlemen. We're not even talking about a stroke. We're talking about something diabolical, something majorly evil. You understand what I mean? Something happened to him for real, for real. And Mr. Duncan is scared out of his mind to speak on it. I wouldn't say a word. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Wow. And that's very appreciative, especially from his side as well. So, um, have you spoken to Jamie since the incident? Uh oh. I have not. Uh, as soon as it happened, as I said, I thought it might have been stress related. I sent him a text. And I'm sure he's probably received who knows how many texts. Wait a minute, Mr. Duncan. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you something. Mr. Duncan, you lying. You lying. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, fam. I get hundreds of messages on Instagram from people. Hundreds. I get messages every day flooding my inbox with all sorts of video content, this, news here, this, that, all this type of stuff. I can't possibly read all of them. But I'll tell you one thing. There are certain people, certain people that I'm very familiar with that they'll send me a message. And once they send the message, I respond to their message. I view their message. Why? Because I know who they are. I may not know them personally, personally in real world, but I know them enough where I'm familiar. So if Mr. Duncan is friends with Jamie Foxx and for some reason they really do communicate on some real ish that they really communicate, then once you text Jamie and he see Christopher Duncan, he's going to respond to your text. And guys, the same thing work in your situation too. You might get a number from a woman, right? And you text her. That woman got your text. She see your text, man. But if she not feeling you, bro, she not going to respond. It's just that simple. She's going to only respond to the guy that really got her attention, the guy that she's really feeling. But you, she's going to ghost you. She's going to put you on the bench. You understand? Let's rewind that back a little bit. Play the tape again. Let's go. I thought it might have been stress related. I sent him a text. You sent him a text. And I'm sure he's probably received who knows how many texts. No, don't try to cover it up now, Mr. Duncan, by saying, oh, he read he, he gets so many text messages that yours got lost in the shovel. No. If Jamie Foxx is in the hospital or at a rehab place, his cell phone is with him. He get a notification. Certainly he know who you are, right? I'm pretty sure if Jamie Foxx's uh, mom is still alive or a father is still alive and they were to text him or call him, he's going to answer. You know, his mom or dad is not going to be on the phone talking about, well, the reason why he couldn't respond to me is because he gets so many text messages. No. If you are on his phone as a friend, he's going to pick up. You understand? So what Mr. Duncan is saying here is lies. Let's get back to it. I thought it might have been stress related. I sent him a text. And I'm sure he's probably received who knows how many texts. Okay. Right? In support, I was letting him know I'm pulling for him. And that I, I was wishing a speedy and full recovery for him. Speedy and recovery for what? For what, Mr. Duncan? A speedy recovery for what? If, if if I had an issue, let's say, for example, if I, Ringo TV had some sort of medical issue, most high forbid, right? And I knew it was life-threatening or some sort of issue, I would definitely come into public and let you guys know. 
I wouldn't be keeping nothing a secret. See, whatever you're willing to keep a secret, it's very bad. And it's something that's so bad they don't want the public to know. This is sad. Let's get back to the tapes. So I sent him that text and, um, you know, he's clearly dealing with so much right now that no matter what. Uh oh, he's looking up, ladies and gentlemen. He's giving off a sign. Oh, man. This guy's lying, man. People, if there's anything you could get from this live stream is this. I teach a lot on body language when people are lying. Mr. Duncan is having an interview with somebody face to face. Why is he looking up as he's talking? Because he's thinking of what to say next because he's lying. Anytime somebody's talking to you and they start touching their face, let's say if you ask somebody a random question. Hey, yo, bro, um, you got my $50 that you owe me? And he's like, uh, well, fam, you know, and he start touching his chin. Once he start touching his chin, he's lying. Back in the days, people used to get punched in the face for stuff like that. As soon as you ask somebody for their money and they start putting their hand on their face, start giving you a sob story, you punch them right in the face real quick. Why? Because they lying to you. Pay me my money, bro. I don't got no time to play. Run those pockets fast. I don't want to hear no talking, bro. Just give up the give up the bread right away. You've been holding out. You, how many of you people back in the day, you loaned somebody some bread, Right. And, and, you know, for some of you, you might say $50, $20, that ain't nothing. Let me tell you something in the streets. In these streets, it's about principle. It doesn't matter if, if you loan somebody $5. It's about principle. So in the hood, if you back in the day, I'm talking about back in the days in the 90s. You know what I mean? Especially in Brooklyn. You loan somebody $20. That was money. That meant a lot because a lot of cats be out here hungry, don't got no food to eat. They don't even know where they're going to get their next dollar from. So if, if I look for my money and you ducking and hiding and I see you down the street, I'm like, yo, fam, where you, where you, where you running to? Where my money, bro? Why you? I haven't seen you around. Yo, I, yo, you know how it is. Once he start talking like that, you just punch him in the face. Ain't no long talking because might as well you just give him a beat down. Because you ain't going to get back your money. He not going to pay you. So you got to beat the money out of him. You know, like a piñata, how you beat the piñata and then it, it cracks open and you get the prizes. That's how you had to do people back in the day, fam. And then he still got to pay the money. Even though he get a beat down, he still got to pay the money. You know? But Mr. Duncan is lying, man. Let's see if we can wind that back. Let's go. Right now that no matter what the case may be. Let me rewind it back a little bit. Amy, since the incident? I have not. Uh, as soon as it happened, as I said, I thought it might have been stress related. I sent him a text. He sent him a text and Jamie didn't even respond. And I'm sure he's probably received who knows how many texts. That's why he said that. In other words, I sent him a text message. He didn't respond to me because, hey, he probably get a lot of text messages. And for whatever reason, he didn't respond to me. But yet I supposed to be his friend. Right. And support. I was letting him know I'm pulling for him. Pulling for him for what? What what is he going through? And that I, I was. Wishing a. He said that with a deep breath, man. He knows what happened to Jamie. He did in full recovery for him. Mm -hmm. So I sent him that text and. Um, and he ain't respond. You know, he's clearly dealing with so much right now that. No matter what the case may be. It's obviously serious enough for him to to need every bit of strength and that's not making no sense, Mr. Duncan, because we saw him out on a yacht. We saw him playing golf. Right? We saw him saving a lady's purse. So you mean to tell me after all this time, Jamie Foxx didn't write you back yet to say, hey, bro, I got your text. Come on, fam. He's lying. When they did this interview, it was for damage control to shape public opinion so that nobody don't look or talk about Jamie Foxx. We breaking down this video thoroughly, fam. Let's get these likes to a thousand. Got twelve hundred people in the building. It should be very easy to get this video streamed to a thousand likes. Let's get them likes up, fam. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Nobody else ain't breaking these videos down like Ringo TV reactions, fam. Let's go. Just 
he needs a lot of healing energy sent his way, good vibes. Yeah, people been praying for him, Mr. Duncan. The public been praying for Jamie Foxx all this time, for months. And Jamie Foxx was out playing golf. Right? Saving women purses. Chilling on a yacht. But he ain't text you back, sir? That's disrespectful. How you his friend and he ain't text you back? What kind of loyalty is that, fam? Oh, I get it, Mr. Duncan. You said earlier, if you know what happened to Jamie, you wouldn't say what happened. I forgot. It's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy, man. And, uh, and the best wishes possible for a full recovery. That's the thing to me. A full recovery. Definitely. Full recovery. Notice his face. Look at the acting. Notice the expression. Full recovery. Recovery from what? From the cloning. From the cloning. Mr. Duncan, you know what happened to Jamie, fam. I can see it on your face, bro. They took him in because there was a, a malfunction with the clone that was on set. That's what happened? What happened, Mr. Duncan, on set with Jamie? Was there a... a, a mechanical malfunction to the clone because you you saying full recovery from what what happened to jamie fox you know what i'm saying yeah and we've seen these kind of incidents we what we seen these kind of incidences that's what the host said happen kind of frequently especially with um black men in their 50s who do seem pretty healthy so it's kind of just um Ah, that this is continuing and also, you know... Why black men in their 50s? Why not white men? Wait a minute. The host said this happens to black men in their 50s, but they don't even know what happened to Jamie Foxx. So what are they talking about? How could you say we see this kind of stuff happen to black men that are in their 50s if we don't even know what happened to Jamie Foxx? Come on, man. They doing damage control, fam. We want to give people uh, the grace of obviously we let the family heal and give their time. Um, but you did spend a lot of time with Jamie, you know, on the Jamie Foxx show. Um, I do want to get to a more lighter subject. Uh, do you have a favorite episode of the Jamie Foxx show? I do. Uh, there are a number of favorite episodes. We There were so many that were just yeah. crazy, crazy fun. Um, he mean the magic show because he said that Jamie Foxx specialized in doing magic when he's acting. And this is a lot of stuff that people don't understand about movies and actors. They're really magicians. This is what they do. They cast spells. They uh, do certain things on screen. And it traumatizes you without you even knowing that you're traumatized. But it does something to you. It's just like back in the days when you were a kid and you watched a horror film and you were just like frightened. You couldn't go to sleep. You didn't want the lights off. You tell your mom, can you keep the lights on? You scared. Why? Because the movie traumatized you. But the dance off. Yes, <laughs> that comes to everyone's mind. Wow. Isn't that something? So in that scene, and I remember seeing this particular clip. I remember seeing this one when he was acting like uh, Michael in that scene. <laughs> when, when Jamie and I had the room. They had the room. When Jamie and I had the room. Together. The room together, he said. When Jamie and I had the room together. Come on, man. Now, but I have to tell you, we did that. We did that. In one take. Really? We did it in one take, Dom. That's crazy. So, but here's what happened. Throughout the entire afternoon, Jamie and I were rehearsing mm -hmm. the choreography. Yeah. So that by the time the audience got there at night, we were set. Yeah. They were set after they did the dance routine. And I'm here to tell you, when we did that dance off, you know, the audience was in this set of like bleachers mm -hmm. watching the, the taping. When we did that dance off, I'm telling you, the noise, they were stomping and screaming. People were throwing things because they were <laughs> so over the top, yeah. fired up about what they had just seen. Mm -hmm. They saw the magicians at work. They saw the spirits that took over them because normally when you're in Hollywood, right? Um, 
there's a spirit that takes over you as an actor when you sell your soul to Satan. Um, a lot of actors, believe it or not, they, and we did a video on this. I forgot exactly which video it was, but uh, we did a video where I'm not sure if it was an actor or was it a, uh, uh, one of those artists, one of those musicians. He said something along the lines that before he did his show or his acting routine, I'm not sure who it was. Was it for the Creed 3? I'm not sure if it was Creed 3 or whatever the case was, but somebody said that they would go into a corner and ask the devil, the demons, to come into them. This is what they said. I, I forgot which live show we did, but it was on an actor. And he said he would, he would, uh, he would go into the corner. Let me see what people saying. Um, snowfall. Let me see. Snowfall, snowfall. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to probably check. A lot of people saying snowfall. Yeah, they conjuring demons. This is exactly. Listen, this is the truth, fam. The person said that before they did their role, they would tell everybody, hold on. They would go into the corner and pray. And they said that they would pray to the demons to come into them in order to do the role. Pure evil. This is what they do. You know what I mean? Salute BK all day with a 499. He says another five for my bro putting in that work. Salute. This is crazy, man. But let's let's get back to the tape, man. I'm gonna have to probably revisit that video, fam, because when when I did that show about the guy that said he asked demons to come in him, it just proved this is what happened. Now, to get to my point, because I was just about to lose my my train of thought. Um, a lot of actors, when they when they do their thing, a spirit really comes over them to make them do the, the acting scene to the point where they they really do look like the person, man. I mean, we see this in Denzel films. You know what I mean? We see this in uh, a lot of movies, man, where actors, they do their part and it's like, man, this looks so damn real. What's going on? Well, a lot of times these people have demons, spirits that they conjure up, that take over them. You see this with Beyonce all the time. Sasha Fierce, anyone? Sasha Fierce, her art alter ego. She says this is what comes out when she do her live shows in public. Sasha Fierce come out, the demon. Look it up. Let's get back to the tapes. And the producers had to edit out all of that crazy, what? you know, cheering and hollering because it went on for so long. Yeah. So the producers would edit out the excitement from the people. Why? So that nobody could see it. And this is what they do in Hollywood right now. They edit stuff. They doctor stuff. You know, they use AI's technology to add in stuff that's not there to convince you that you saw what you just heard and, and seen. It's really crazy. Don't got that time. Please. And Jamie and I were just loving every minute of it. We kept looking over at each other and... They were loving it. They were loving each other. They were loving every minute of it. It's crazy. He's almost talking as if though Jamie Foxx have died already. If you really listen to him carefully, he's talking like in memory of Jamie Foxx. That's how he sound. He do not sound like somebody that is speaking about his friend that is still living. He sound like he's giving a testimony of all the fun times when he was alive. Put it together, y'all. This is crazy, man. Let's get back to the tape. You know, at, at one point, we at the end of the scene, we even had to pause and just like go over to the audience and yeah. have a connection for a bit because we knew that we had been in this solid, solid dynamic mm -hmm. and all that rehearsal throughout the afternoon had paid off. Definitely. And I'll tell you one other quick thing, Dom, about that episode. Mm -hmm. You remember the moment where Braxton has uh, the glove yeah. in the glass case? Yeah. Now, that was my idea. Really? In the script, mm -hmm. the way it was originally written, the writers had a note. Braxton goes to a drawer and pulls out a Michael glove. A Michael glove. A Michael glove. See, what you have to get from that, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that the industry did that episode not in honor 
of Michael Jackson, but it was to let the people know that Michael Jackson was going to have to answer for everything he's done because he was a whistleblower in the industry. Uh, he talked about uh, various executives. Um, I think one particular executive or somebody, Tommy Matola or something along those lines. He talked about owning half of uh, Sony. Um, he talked about a lot. And once he did that, he broke the oath. You know, he broke the oath on the uh, Oprah Winfrey show when he disrespected Oprah Winfrey. We're going to have to do that show where we can find the origins of when the elite was coming after Michael Jackson because they wanted him dead for a long time because he was too powerful and they wanted to take his wealth as well. So once Michael Jackson had control over all of the uh, the Beatles um, catalog and he had ownership of half of Sony, he was able to finesse them. He literally finessed the industry. You know they're not going to tolerate that. You know? Yeah, Prince too. Because these guys are smart. People think that Michael Jackson was dumb. No. But see, look at what they did to him. They, they made him out to be a pedophile. He was not no pedophile. But, they, but this is what they painted him as. And a lot of you, you believe the lie that the AI technology put out. The artificial intelligence. They put this info out there to the public. And we took our heroes. Let me, let me explain something, fam. All of our heroes growing up, whether you believe that Michael Jackson was a hero or not, respectfully, you have to understand that these are our, our icons, our stars, whatever the case is, um, and whom we were growing up with. You know, the Bill Cosbys, the Prince, you know, whether you say Prince is, you know, uh, on the funny side or the rainbow side or whatever you want to say, I, I, don't, I don't believe he was. I just believe that that was his style because if you really think about it, Prince came from an era where that is how a lot of these guys dressed. That's how they act. That was their mannerism. It is what it is. But he was a he was definitely a very talented musician. You know what I'm saying? And they took all of these guys and they took the, they, they either took them out, deleted them, or incarcerated them and made them out to have bad reputations. They did this with, with uh, Prince. They did this with uh, uh, Michael Jackson. They did this with Bill Cosby. You know, they did this with R. Kelly. A lot of you have turned your back against R. Kelly because the powers that be, the beast system, because R. Kelly didn't want to go with the flow, they turned him into a pedophile, a guy who is a, a grape a grapist, a guy who abused young women. And they painted that narrative in the public for you. And you believed it. And because of that, with no proof, no evidence of anything, they put him in prison because of you. You put him there. Remember, the court of public opinion. If the majority of you believe that R. Kelly is no good, then they're going to they're gonna ship him away. And that's exactly what they did. They did the same thing with, um, what's the other guy? Um, I talked about him the other night. Um, dag, what's his name, man? Um, Meek Mills shouted him out in uh, one of his concerts. Um, Meek Mills recent. Okay, the guy that did the situation with um Meg The Stallion, where some woman got shot. What's that that brother's name? Trey Song. Trey? No, not Trey Songs. Um, the the Yard brother, man. Um, what's his name, man? Let me see. Tory Lanes. There you go. Tory Lanes. Right? Tory Lanes. Tory Lanes. Pretty much did something that pissed off the industry. You understand? He did something that pissed off the industry. He figured out a way of how to make money without being connected to the industry, the labels. And they did what they did to take him down so that he could prevent from teaching others. This is why I believe Meek Mills or somebody was like free Tory Lanes from prison. You know what I mean? 
because he found out how to how to make money without being tied down to the contracts because you have to understand a lot of our brothers and sisters are locked into contracts in the industries and uh they're unable to really make the money that they really deserve Tory Lanez figured out how to finesse the industry not in a bad way in a good way he just he just figured out how to do it and he was successful at it you know and they decided to take him down with this charge and to be honest Meg Meg the woman know he didn't do nothing but because she's a part of the system as well because she made the oath because she took the oath she had to sell him out it's a dog eat dog world man hopefully Tory Lanez when he you know get free do what he got to do he understand how to move and recognize that the industry is dirty but he knows about it now hopefully he's protected by the most high while he's in there but I don't believe that that brother did anything I believe something went wrong gun went off something happened and they just pinned it on that brother to take him out but this is what the industry do to, to all of our heroes anybody that's a hero anybody we grew up on anybody I'm not saying you grew up on Tory Lanez but respectfully this is what they do to our brothers mainly black men this really don't happen to, to uh, black women they for some reason they let black women they let you rock out but when it comes to black men they always take down any black men of influence bill cosby he wanted to buy out some sort of uh company and start something big right they didn't let him achieve that but notice who became a mega billionaire tyler perry buying out all those studios having all this land and property and doing all this stuff. Why? Because he took the oath. Because he took the oath, fam. They couldn't get Bill Cosby. Imagine how old Bill Cosby is, and yet they still trying to pin him with dirt. This is what they do, y'all. Let's get back to the tapes. I said to them, oh, wait, 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 wait. This would be far too valuable uh, a possession for Braxton. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be in a, a breakaway glass case. Yeah. And they bought it. A breakaway glass case. A breakaway glass case. Why a glass case? They say if you live in a glass house, you shouldn't throw stones. And see... That's exactly what Michael Jackson did. Michael Jackson was throwing stones while in the house of the industry and he broke through the glass. So what Mr. Duncan is saying there is a subliminal message of the plot and the plan that the elite is giving out messages on Michael Jackson. In other words, you throwing stones at us, you doing X, Y, and Z because Michael been throwing stones at the elite from the Billie Jean days. Do you understand? From the thriller days, Michael Jackson been trying to wake people up. He been trying to say, they don't care about us. If you go back to all of the Michael Jackson albums, man, he been sounding the alarm through his music for the longest. But nobody didn't pay attention. I've been paying attention. My eyes been open from way back in the day. And I always knew that Michael Jackson was trying to get our attention with the elite. Remember the, video, the music video when he was walking on the uh, the uh, so-called uh, the um, checkerboard tiles? He was letting you know about the powers that be, the elite. He was letting you know through the music vid videos on how they're trying to keep him boxed in. But nobody was listening. He was crying out for help. But nobody was there to save him. It's crazy stuff, fam. Let's get those likes up, man. We should be at a thousand likes already, fam. Nobody on YouTube is breaking down this video like Ringo TV reactions. Let's go. Went with it. So, so that works. That is part of the history of my dynamic with Jamie. Mm -hmm. From the very audition itself. I still got the Billie Jean album. 
the, the whole album where he's on the cover. Um, I believe it's all white or whatever the case is. I still got the album. I got double album. Jamie and I have had this wonderful back and forth of... He's reminiscing, y'all. You can't see this? Whether he's talking past tense or what, that does not sound like someone that know their friend is in the hospital. That sounds like somebody that is speaking as if though he passed away. Playfully trying to challenge each other and throw each other off with the material. Mm -hmm. And that happened from the first time I met him. Yeah. Which I'll tell you about. So when I went to the audition, they had seen tons of people for the role. I didn't even know about that at that time. Mm -hmm. They seen tons of people for the role because when Holly Weird select you, you gotta be the kind of person they could use as a puppet. I'd been in Chicago, living in Chicago because I was done with LA. I was getting work. I'd been out there for seven years, but I was just fed up with the egos, the rejection. The, it was wearing on my spirit. Do you see how it was wearing on his spirit? He's in the industry and it was wearing on his spirit. The egos, the rejection. Why? Because they just wouldn't let him in the door. They wouldn't let him in the door. He had to do something in order for the elite to be pleased. So I went out to Chicago. I wanted to get back in touch with my- He went out to Chicago. Come on, fam. Isn't that where Jamie Foxx is? Come on. What's going on with Chicago and Jamie Foxx, man? Something's going on. Everybody that's out in Chicago, man, you got to tell me what's going on, man. Y'all out there in them streets, man. What's happening, man? What's happening in Chicago, man? What's going on, man? Y'all supposed to have the firsthand word on what's going on with Jamie, man. And, and here's another thing, fam. Check this one out. If Jamie Foxx is in Chicago, why we don't see no videos on social media? of people just randomly seeing jo uh, Jamie Foxx and shooting video. How come we don't see nothing? What's going on? This is crazy, man. Let's get back to the tape. Of, for the craft. Mm -hmm. So I'm out there doing theater, working main stage at the Goodman Theater in Chicago mm -hmm. and doing film work out there. I, I, I got back in touch with my love for the craft. Mm -hmm. I was no longer just chasing the carrot, which is trying to get that television series, right. wow. trying to get that film work and ah. Wow, so he was chasing a carrot, y'all. This guy was struggling, chasing a carrot in Hollyweird. Listen to this testimony, man, this is crazy. And doing film work out there. I, I, I got back in touch with my love for the craft. He I, got back in touch with his love for the craft because he lost it, ladies and gentlemen. He lost it. He lost his love for the craft because Holly Weird drained his spirit and he gave up, but he decided to go back. It's no longer just chasing the carrot, which is trying to get that television series, right. wow. trying to get that film work and ah. Mm -hmm. I was basically smothering the thing that I loved mm -hmm. because I wasn't letting my life breathe. Mm -hmm. He wasn't letting his life breathe. Wow. Imagine how many other actors is going through the same thing. So the following year, after being there for a year, I said to myself, let me go back to L.A. during pilot season and I'm going to audition, hopefully get some guest starring work. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get a gig, fam. He was struggling, down on luck, couldn't make it. Nobody was giving him opportunity. Bring some extra money back home. What do you think was my first, literally done my first audition? Jamie Foxx show. Wow. Now remember, I was free mm -hmm. creatively. Mm -hmm. Free creatively, but he had to take the oath to get in. Emotionally, mentally, I was free because I, I, w I was no longer desperate to... Desperate. Do you see what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you get into Hollywood, you become desperate. And when a desperate man, listen, desperate men or women will go through desperate measures to get what they want. So if they want that carrot... They'll sell their soul. Do you see that? Let's go. Get things done. I was just busy reveling in the craft itself. Mm -hmm. Reveling in the craft itself. Reveling. Look up the word. So I go to the door. D 
Dee Dee Bradley is the casting director. Mm -hmm. And she says to me, uh oh, Chris, I want you to know Jamie's in the room and he's throwing a lot of the actors off because he's going off the page. And I said, he's improvising? She said, yeah. I said, Dee Dee, I'm from the theater. If he wants to improvise, we're going to dance. Yeah. In other words, he know how to improvise too. In other words, basically, Jamie Foxx is not going according to the script. The script says you got to say this. Instead of Jamie following what the script says, Jamie is just naturally flowing, doing his own thing. So what Mr. Duncan is saying is, hey, we're going to we're going to end up dancing because I know how to improvise, too. So if a Jamie Foxx go this way, I know how to react to it and make it look believable. That's basically what he's saying. So if he goes off script, I could go off script and it's going to look so natural. You're going to think that it was the script that we were literally doing. And she went. OK, so I walk in the room and I see Jamie. Now, mind you, all the executive producers, Bentley Kyle Evans, who also produced Martin. Mm -hmm. Uh Oh, that also produced Martin. Remember, Martin had to put on a dress. Remember, all of the black actors in Hollyweird, they had to put on dresses, put on lipstick, makeup, wigs. They had to look like a woman. And then they had to go into the back rooms to do what they had to do in order to get the role. They had to sit in the director's couch. Think about it, y'all. And so many other shows. This man is constantly busy. The president of Warner Brothers, they're all there. Okay? All these big wigs. Jamie's in the room. I see him. He said, No, no, a lot of you are not seeing. You're not paying attention. See, this is what happens when you have that third eye vision, fam. A lot of y'all are thinking that he's just remembering the good times on the show and, you know, just... You know, talking about this and that. No, no, you got to see between the lines. He already know that something is wrong with Jamie and he's in trouble. And he's speaking as if though the brother already done passed away. Because he most likely did already. And that's how he's talking. That's how they wanted the interview to be. And he's also using his acting ability. See, a lot of y'all, y'all forget that Mr. Duncan is an actor. Anybody that's in theater... Anybody that's an actor, they could put on a wonderful performance. It'll be so believable, you don't even know they're in acting mode. You wouldn't even know. You think you're just looking at a normal conversation between these two brothers here? No. Mr. Duncan is acting. What's up? I said, what's up, man? Here's what's in the script. It's a scene where I'm at the front desk talking to Garcelle's character, Francesca. Mm -hmm. And while I'm talking with her, what's written is Jamie's supposed to walk over to me, interrupt us and say, uh, look here, partner. Um, I'm trying to get a word in edgewise with this uh, fine young lady, you know, but <laughs> you all in my way, partner. La, la, la. Those are the words that are written. Mm -hmm. And then I'm supposed to say to him, excuse me. I, as you can see, am currently having a conversation. When I am done, you will have your opportunity. That's what was written. So he's telling you what was written down on the script. And normally when you're an actor, you read this script a thousand times to the point where you memorize all the words. When you, anybody that is into acting, anybody that's into theater, you have the talent. Some people might not understand it, but you can memorize your lines perfectly. You know what I mean? It's just an ability that actors have whereas if you were just to take some random person off the street and told them hey this is the script do it they wouldn't even be able to do it you know when you're an actor you have to multitask so it's not just you reading and memorizing your part but also the body language facial expressions the attitude everything got to be on point that's not what happened yeah so i go walking over to the scene to start it instead of those lines i just told you mm -hmm. Jamie comes walking over and he's literally wiggling like this. And he said, uh, look here, Brian Gumble, You all up in this uh, babe's face, you know, partner, you in my way. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, talk to it for a minute. He called me Brian Gumble, And I immediately said, excuse me, you rap scallion. And Jamie looked at me. I saw his eyes flinch. Like he was like, what, what did his brother just say? 
And after I said, you rapscallion, I said, I do not need your falderall and ballyhoo. I am speaking with this young lady and I ask that you use your manners. And if you cannot use your manners, then I ask that you leave. <laughs> Basically, he was just improvising. In other words, giving Jamie back the same similar energy that he was giving off because Jamie didn't go by the script either. Jamie Foxx, he was looking at me and he was utterly stunned. Yeah. He didn't know what to say. In the middle of the scene, he looks over at the producers in the room, in the middle of the scene, mm -hmm. after I said those things. Yeah. He looks over at them and he goes, this motherfucker. <laughs> The whole room busted out. Yeah. I mean, they fell out. They couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. And Jamie was looking at me because he knew he was in for a challenge. Right, He's just right. looking at me. And while they're laughing, I stayed in character. <laughs> and I'm looking at him. And I said, well, are you going to use your manners? And Jamie went, boy? He's looking me up and down. Boy, I'm trying to figure out if Jamie is out playing golf, saving women purses with a cape on, on the yacht, chilling. Why Jamie haven't come out into the public and confirm that what Mr. Duncan is saying is accurate. I'm just saying, I'm just asking questions. He didn't know what to say. Right. Jamie Fox was stumped. <laughs> and ever since that time, mm -hmm. that was the dynamic for us throughout that entire run. Yeah. That's how you get a role. That, um, if Jamie's watching right now, is there anything that you would want to say to him? Uh-oh. If Jamie Fox is watching right now, the host said, what would you want to tell him? Let's park there for a minute. If Jamie Foxx is watching right now, what would you want to tell him? Think about that. If Jamie Foxx is watching right now, what would you want to tell him? Is what he asked Christopher Duncan. Now, it's interesting. It's an interesting question because you, you said, Mr. Duncan, earlier that you you text Jamie Foxx and he didn't even respond to you. So it, 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 why would he be watching and you want to say something? Why don't you just pick up the phone and call him? If you want to say something to Jamie Foxx, if Jamie Foxx is alive and well, why don't you, Mr. Duncan, call up your friend, Jamie Foxx, and tell him to go live on his Instagram and talk to the people. Let's hear what he had to say, fam. Let's get back to the tapes. Notice he has to think about it, y'all. Notice his facial expression. Wow. Wow. I mean, if this is your friend, if this is somebody that you, you got love for, you, it shouldn't be that hard to express how you feel, bro. Look at him. He had to look up. He had to think about it. He had to think about what to say. Wow. We need you. Wow. We need you is what he said. Come on, man. Come on. This man knows what happened to Jamie Foxx, y'all. He knows already. He just ain't saying it. He told you if he knew he's not going to tell you. He knows what happened. He said, we need you. We. Who's we? Who's we? Because... If we need him, why Jamie didn't come online to tell his fans, hey, thanks for all the prayers. I'm doing good. I'm in the hospital. I'm, you know, just taking it easy. I'll be out soon. 
you know, looking forward to working and interacting with you guys. As I said, I'm kind of busy, you know. But he can't say that. You know why he can't say that? Because he was on a yacht chilling and he was out playing golf at Top Golf. That's a place anybody can go to. That wasn't no medical facility. He was at Top Golf. Anybody could go there. Right? And he's out and about saving purses. So if he got time to do all of that, and Mr. Duncan is saying, we need you, how come Jamie Foxx never addressed it, Mr. Duncan, yet? Come on, y'all. Yeah, it sounds like it is promotion. It sounds like it is promotion for the, the so-called Netflix garbage that they're going to be releasing out there. But anyway, let's get back to the tapes. We need you, Brother Jamie. Wow. Your multitude of talents spread so much light and joy, entertainment, and I can't think of a more important time than now in this country in particular, let alone the world, when all of that is needed. So, like I said, we need you. My wish for you is that you heal completely. Wow. And that you're able to get back to working your magic. What? And shining your incredible light. That he can get back to working his magic. Man. This sound like a speech for somebody that that passed away, man. Like, in other words, we need for you to come back from the dead. Like, we heard you died. Wow. I just got a download. I just got a download from the Most High. Wow, that's amazing. He's speaking as if though Jamie died already. Could it be that Jamie Foxx is in a coma? On life support. And they put the clone out there to do damage control because they want to buy time because of the release of the movies. Because the way Mr. Duncan is talking is as if though Jamie passed away. Like he's given this, this speech. It don't, it don't sound normal. It, it almost sound like, like he did pass away. And we're just kind of listening to an interview of a man that had a lot of respect and love for Mr. Fox. It's crazy, man. Let me let me rewind that piece right there. Because let me hear the speech again. We need you. We need you, brother Jamie. Your and then by the by the fact that they edit in this, it just makes it look more like something happened to him. That's how it's looking. He said, we need you. For what purpose? Multitude of talents spread so much light and joy. Believe it or not, Jamie Foxx is responsible for a lot of people eating in Hollywood that's connected to him. A lot of people are able to eat for him being alive. If he's passed on, it, people going to suffer. Entertainment. And I can't think of a more important time than now in this country in particular, let alone the world, when all of that is needed. So, like I said, we need you. My wish for you is that you heal completely. And wow. that you're able to get back to working your magic and shining your incredible light. That's my wish for you, Jamie. <laughs> That's crazy, fam. This is some crazy stuff, man, when you really think about it. Absolutely crazy. That speech that he gave right there is, uh, it speaks volumes. It's like, man, what happened to this guy? What exactly happened to Jamie? 
they're not telling us, man. They're not telling us what's going on. You know? Um, let me see what's going on here. See if somebody need to get get packed up. Let me see. Um, that girl, that girl, or who are you saying to shut up, robot? I need to know who you're saying to shut up, robot. Are you talking about Mr. Duncan or are you referring to me? I need to know. So uh, um, we know you're listening. So you got about 10 seconds to uh, make that very clear. I need to know, miss, uh, let me see, that girl, Ion, Ion, whatever. Uh, let me see. I need to know what's going on. Because he said, shut up, robot. I need to know, are you talking to me? Or are you talking to Mr. Duncan? Um, let me see. We don't see you responding. Going once. Going twice. Sold. So, uh, we're going to pretty much pack you up. Get you on out of here. Because it makes no sense. I mean, like, why? Why would this be funny? <laughs> Doesn't even make no sense. But anyway, um, that was easy. Anyway, let's get back to the point here. Um, it's interesting how my eyes catch things. You know, let's go. Because in the next clip, we're going to listen to more on what Mr. Duncan had to say regarding his career and various other things. Okay, this is crazy stuff, fam. What's going on with Jamie? What's really happening is what we want to know. My work speaks for itself. I believe... The reason I've been able to continue. The reason why he was able to continue working in Hollyweird is because, like I said, he didn't cross the line. Look at his face. He's being very careful. Being very careful with what he say. Listen to what he says. Working is because my range. Mm -hmm. The drama, the comedy, the action, all three genres. I've been in and I continue mm -hmm. to get work in all three areas. Mm -hmm. If the Braxton spiral thing hadn't happened in the same year, mm. I think it would have made a huge difference. In other words, if people had just seen Braxton only, or even say the first three years of the show, I think it would have sealed that image without any help. Spiral was a I can't tell you how important it was mm -hmm. because again, it established, wait a minute, this guy's an actor mm -hmm. who can do comedy mm -hmm. and do drama and action. Mm -hmm. I'm not Braxton. I played Braxton. Now, the problem that uh, Mr. Duncan is having or what it appears to be is that in Hollyweird, people didn't give him his proper just respect. Now, again, respectfully, and this is me just saying straight, like, I don't recall seeing this brother in no other movie. I don't recall ever seeing this guy do any other acting except from the Jamie Foxx show. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe he probably got some films out there he did, some action films. I don't know. I'm going to do my research after the stream to look up Mr. Duncan's portfolio and see what kind of acting gigs he did in Hollywood to see what kind of work he done. Um, because again, the only thing I can remember is him being on the Jamie Foxx show. But what's happening here is people are not giving him his respect. They keep looking at him as Braxton, Braxton from the Jamie Foxx show. Listen as he explains it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, annoying when I'm like, someone just keeps I have a bittersweet relationship with that issue mm -hmm. that I deal with to this, this very day. There are people who will always see me as Braxton. Mm -hmm. Am I? And when I say movies, y'all, I'm talking about movies, not just in a film. 
I'm talking about in a in a heavy, you know, high profile movie. You know, like when you look at a movie like Heat with Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, you know what I mean? Those kind of movies, movies with A-list actors, real heavy material. I'm talking about movies like that. That's what I'm that's what I'm interested in. Not just your basic film that just get released. No. To me, that's not really that's not really any major work. I'm talking about a blockbuster hit. That's what I'm talking about. Mad at them. I'm not mad at them because some said it, people will feel what they're going to feel. Some said original gangsters. I'll look it up. Right. 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 I have no control over that. I'm disappointed that sometimes there isn't more flexibility in perception. Because if you see me in a different role, mm -hmm. you see me doing the work. Mm -hmm. If it's a drama, if it's a romantic comedy, whatever it is. All I ask is for some openness to receive it. Right. Some people are able to do that. And some people still have this response of, oh, come on, that's Braxton. Wow. That's so they just looked at him like, oh, that's Braxton. You know what I'm saying? That, that, uh, that's just Braxton. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Somebody said original gangsters. Okay. I see the film here. Let me see this. So this is him. Let me see if I can add this into the... Uh, all right. This was 1996. Original gangster. All right. Let me download that. So I can add that into the video. I don't recall seeing this. Real talk. I don't recall seeing this. I might have to look it up to see exactly what's going on with this particular film here. Because it looked like you had some... Let me see. Let me get that into the film. Into the stream, I mean. So this is a clip it looked like from that original gangster gangsters i don't recall ever seeing that i never seen that i might actually take a look at it see what's going on because based on what he's saying here he's been struggling with the idea of people keep looking at him as braxton rather than respecting him for his talents whereas jamie fox got in all the big films i mean he jamie fox did films with everybody you know what I mean? I would, matter of fact, I was just watching <laughs> a film last night with him and um, what's this guy, man? Um, not, not Brad Pitt. That other guy, man. Um, when the world's this guy, man? The movie is about uh, Jamie was a a, a taxi cab guy. Y'all y'all know the name. He was a taxi ca taxi cab guy. And um, I think Jada Pinkett Smith, was she in the film? I think she was in the film. She was an attorney or something like that. And she was in the back seat in the car. And he was talking with her and they took a bet on um, how fast he could get to her location. I believe that was it. Tom Cruise. There you go. Appreciate it. Lively cuts said Tom Cruise. Yeah. I mean, he act. Jamie Foxx was in movies with Tom Cruise. Now, you know, if you're in a film with Tom Cruise, that's, you know, collateral. Yeah. There you go. There you go. That's the that's the film. Good movie. You know what I'm saying? But that's just a, a that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about movies like that. With, with the, the A-list actors, you know, what I mean, Jamie Foxx is up there with those guys. You know, maybe, maybe Mr. Duncan been in a film with a with an A-list actor. I don't know. Like I said, after this film, after this uh, stream, I'm going to go look up his catalog and see all the films that he been in and do some research on it because I want to know, you know. Anyway, let's get back to the tapes. Braxton. No, 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 no. That's, that's a, yeah, like I said, that's bittersweet because 
I can't help but be appreciative and be grateful that when people come up to me on the street, all the love I receive, the support. Meaning he's appreciating the love and the support. But the thing that is like what makes it bittersweet is that anytime somebody look at him, they only remember him as Braxton from the Jamie Foxx show. And he want to move from that. He want to expand what he can do. And it's almost as if though Holly Weird held back his potential from getting gigs in the big films. That's what I'm hearing from him here. The people expressing their gratitude for having all these wonderful memories and for not only Braxton, but the show bringing them so much joy. How can I not embrace that? How can I not be? That's called typecasted, right? Let me see. Somebody just said that. Shiz, creative typecast it you know what's so interesting I, your comment just stood out because i was watching a video where it's like they keep an actor in a certain lane i forgot where i was looking at it it's, it's interesting you just posted that typecasting because somebody else on youtube was talking about actors being stuck in the same lane repeating the same thing and it's like, they don't want to let them move on. You get what I'm saying? Let me look it up. Let me look it up. Um, okay. Let me look this up. Typecast. Assigned an actor or actress repeatedly to the same type of role as a result of of the appropriateness of their appearance or previous success in such role. So basically, um, let me add that. So basically, um, what happened to Mr. Duncan is Holly Weird, they looked at him, they looked at his demeanor, the way he conduct himself, and they said, you know what? We don't think you're fit to be in a role like this movie here. You're just not. You're too clean. You don't fit the role of a gangster. Because, listen, that little clip I just showed you with this, he don't look like no gangster. I'm just being honest with you. He don't look like a gangster. He just don't. I'm not getting gangster. You know what I'm saying? I don't get it. But now, if you get, uh, let me see, when you had DMX in films, Tupac in films, uh, what's the other brothers from Onyx? When they were in films, you know what I mean? When those guys was on camera, them guys look like gangsters. When you had LL playing uh, that that particular role, man, what was that movie, man? With him and um, what's the dark skin brother, man? Um, he was he was playing. What the hell is the scene, man? Um, In Too Deep is the movie. In Too Deep, I think it is. With um, is it Gigs or Riggs? I'm probably getting the brother name all mixed up. Frito, is his name? No, Omar Epps. That's his name. Omar Epps. Omar Epps. Free, Frito is, is uh, the guy from Onyx, right? And Sticky Fingers. Yeah, both of those guys, when they were in different roles in movies, because I, if I'm correct, wasn't the brothers from Onyx, they were in In Too Deep, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. They were in In Too Deep. I think, yeah, 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 they definitely was because I remember LL told them, Yo, go and um, put them to the test, I guess. And he sent them to go do a test to see if 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 um if Epps was going to, I guess, be official. Just like in these streets. When you're in these streets, sometimes people put two other brothers on you to say, yo, see if he really official. Let him go do the work. Give him the burner. You know what I mean? Let him do it to see if you really got it. And what ha end up happened? They end up killing the other two, the other two guys in the stairwell, in the basement. 
because they were going, they were basically trying to rob him. You know what I mean? But my point is, when those guys were in those films, they looked like gangsters. They looked like they from the streets. Why? Because a lot of those brothers been in the streets. So it wasn't even about acting. These brothers just know how to move. So when they get on camera, it was easy to do. You know? But when I look at this guy here, he too clean. He too clean. He, he, he don't fit the role. So in Hollywood, they pretty much typecast him. That's what they did to him, fam. They did that. They were like, uh, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna work, man. You know? It's just the way it is, man. You, you're just not fit. We're gonna keep you right here where it's safe. We're gonna keep you where it's safe, where we feel your best. You know? Ice Cube, um, been in, in films. All of these guys, when they're in films, they look the part. You know? They all look the part. And that's what I'm saying. That's the difference. So with him, he was too clean cut, man. Respectfully, you know, it's not a, it's not a diss. It's not a diss. This is just how Holly Weird is. They just didn't see him in those roles. It didn't. Just like I said, when I look at this, I don't see a gangster. I don't see somebody that looks intimidating. I don't see anybody that look like they really official. It don't look like he about that life. It don't look, he don't look threatening in no way. You know what I mean? It's just the way it is. I could just tell. And then again, if he played uh, Braxton on the Jamie Foxx show, he was more of the preppy type, you know? Uh, the teacher looker, the, the, the guy that looked like the guy that he wouldn't hurt a fly. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean he's soft. It just, you know, he just don't look the part. You know? So that's pretty much what they did to him, and he's upset about that. You know? Let's get back to the tape. You know, uh, grateful for that. I am. But it is, it is tough. To, I'll tell you this. Yeah. Let me tell you where it's most tough, John. Is when... People in, uh... And you know what's so crazy about this is that he probably wanted to have the roles that wasn't fitting for him. Because if you really think about it, he got the look of an actor. He got the look. He got talent too. My point is he should have been in roles where it's more like a, a mob boss. Somebody that is wearing suits because that's what he wore all the time on the Jamie Foxx show. You know what I mean? So if you really think about it, he could be a mob boss, not necessarily somebody that's doing the dirty work, somebody that's grabbing the gun, somebody that's doing this, but somebody that's calling the shots. He could be in films where he played those roles. But the point is, again, if Holly Weird don't think he fit the role, it's not going to work. But just by looking at the way he moved, his acting abilities. If I was the ones in charge, I know what movies he belong in. Because I can see talent and I know exactly where y'all supposed to, you know, I can see talent and know exactly what you need to do to Im improve and, and, and be successful. You know? He probably wanted the roles that wasn't good for him. And he felt cheated in Hollywood. Positions of power who can cast folks in certain roles yeah he do sound like obama i ain't gonna lie he do see he do sound like him in certain words he do sound he has that tone he definitely do it's most upsetting to me if they say well we like his work he's perfect for this role but that's braxton wow have you heard that before wow i've heard that before in terms of the actions the that actions so basically, he didn't necessarily hear it, but the actions of people around him made him feel like he wasn't good enough to be in the roles because, oh, that's that's just Braxton. You know what I'm saying? Unfold with any given project. I've even heard that as I've walked into certain rooms in the past. Mm. But let me be clear about something. This is where it hurts me the most. This is where it hurts him the most. Let's hear what he have to say. 
because he's now about to release some pain and frustration that he'd been dealing in Hollywood. And it seems like it's coming from his own people. Let's hear what he have to say. What I'm getting ready to tell you does not happen in general if I walk into a room full of white producers. Wow. Uh-oh. Because they, even though Jamie's show transcended race, black people watched it predominantly, but white people, Asian people, uh, Latinos, his show transcended race. Mm -hmm. But like I said, truthfully, a predominantly black audience tuned in. If I walk into a room full of, let's say, brothers and sisters who are producing this project. Uh-oh. If he walk into a room where brothers and sisters, usins, are producing a project, what happened? And I literally hear, as I walk into the room, what's up, Braxton? What's up, man? Wow. <sighs> wow. They, they don't see him as an actor. They, just, they don't see him as nothing but stuck in one lane. <laughs> That's what they see. And it's sad because how would people do that type of stuff, man? They could just be some way, man. They could really done. Yeah, I, I know what he's saying there. A room full of, let's say, brothers and sisters who are producing this project. Mm -hmm. And I literally hear as I walk into the room, what's up, Braxton? What's up, man? <laughs> it's like a yeah. a wrench in my gut wow because you... it's immediately saying to me even though you're here and we're seeing you for this dramatic role for this romantic lead for this um hard-hitting heavy character mm -hmm. even though we're seeing you for that we just made it clear to you how we see you wow in other words we don't see you as anything else but braxton from the jamie fox show we don't think you got the potential to do the role that's basically what he's saying fam yeah a room a room full of ninjas <laughs> And they just all looking at him like, oh, that's just Braxton, you know? But if Denzel walked in the room, they're not going to say that, you know? They, you, you know, once once Denzel walk in the room, he just get respect right away, you know? Denzel is perfect for every role. <laughs> I mean, could anybody name a, a movie that Denzel did that's whack? I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. That's like, that's like you telling me a song that R. Kelly made that's whack. Name one song that R. Kelly has made that is whack. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> There's not one song that R. Kelly has ever made that's whack. You know what I'm saying? And I still think Ron Isley is his pops. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, hey, that's just my personal belief. I believe that Ron Isley is R. Kelly's pops. Don't tell them that I said so. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't tell them I said so. But, hey, it is what it is, man, because, you know, he got the talent. He probably got the talent from Ron, Ron Isley, because the reason why I say that, ladies and gentlemen, is if there's an interview, it's probably still on YouTube where Ron Isley talked about R. Kelly. And he said that R. Kelly's mom was on the tour bus with them. <laughs> he said that Ron, he said that R. Kelly's mom was a groupie. This is what he said, man. He said that R. Kelly, R. Kelly's mom, respectfully now, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be funny. You know what I mean? And if she was a groupie on the tour bus, man, you know it went down. You know it went down, fam. 
I'm just saying, man, it is what it is, man. Let's get back to the tape. And knowing what you know now, years later, do you regret taking the role? No. Wow. No way I regret it. He don't regret taking the role, but if you look at his face, man, you see the pain. Yeah, he definitely smashed. He definitely smashed. I mean, if, if a woman is a groupie on a bus and you're with the Isley Brothers, man, come on, man. You, you know, you got to smash. Come on now. The Isley Brothers? You know how many hit songs? You know what kind of music? Come on, man. These, forget about it, man. If she was on that bus, man, she was on the bus with, with, <laughs> my goodness. You know, this is crazy, man. Anyway, man, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. In clear visuals, we broke down the video. We showed you exactly what's going on. Um, It's very clear and evident that Mr. Duncan knows what happened to Jamie. And for whatever reason, he can't speak about it. He can't speak about it, man. Who else is he's done? He already struggled in the industry. He probably got a few gigs here and there to make a few dollars and keep himself afloat. Probably still getting some royalties from certain movies and films and acting gigs. So uh, he's just trying to be on the safe side right now. He don't want to really get anybody offended. But um, he knows what happened to Jamie. And again, if you've been watching from the beginning, we broke it down where he said that if he know what happened to Jamie, he won't tell you nothing. This is what he said, y'all. Check it out. What matters is that Jamie heals fully and that he can get back to working his magic. Exactly. Because that's what he does. His magic. So that's, that is what matters to me. Definitely. Not all these different, oh, oh, no, I think it's this. No, no, you're wrong. I think it, none of us really know. None of our business either. <laughs> That's if, the thing. If it's none of our business, like I said a thousand times, why y'all talking about it? It is our business. They put it out there for everybody to know. How are you going to say it's none of our business when they put it out there that Jamie Foxx had a medical emergency? People ask me every day now, what, what's going on with Jamie? What happened? Because you're his friend, right? You know him. You're close. You should, you're supposed to know. I explained to them, I don't know. Wow. He and don't here's know. the thing, because I don't know. He do know. But even if I did, Dom, uh -oh. hypothetically, let's say I, I knew, but I do not. But if I did, I wouldn't say a word about it. Wow. Because it's private family business. Wow. Because at the end of the day, end of the day, Jamie's not just an incredible entertainer on so many different levels. He's a dad. He's a close friend. Notice how they threw the camera up close to give the close up to make it more intimate. If you understand anything about cinema, cinema uh, photography, when you have, you know, those close up shots, you know, those very close up, close personal shots like that, it's to make it more intimate when he's talking to, to get gather the emotions to those friends he has in his circle. He's a son. I mean, you know, we're talking about private, meaningful family business. They hired Mr. Duncan, in my opinion, to do this interview to try to sway public opinion so that we don't talk about it. So we could just stop talking about it. No, we're never going to stop talking. So even if I did know, I wouldn't say a word. Wow. I wouldn't. That's wrong. That's wrong, Mr. Duncan. How you going to say if you knew what happened, you wouldn't even say nothing? So, so let me get this straight, Mr. Duncan. So, so Mr. Duncan, if somebody deleted Jamie Foxx, you're not going to say who did it. See that? Do you see how he was able to do that? So if they purposely took Jamie Foxx out, blood sacrifice, deleted him, and Mr. Duncan knew what happened, he would not tell no one. He would not tell no one, y'all. This is what Holly Weir does, man. Christopher Duncan prove the industry is hiding the truth. 
about Jamie Foxx being cloned, y'all. They're hiding the truth. What a shame. What a shame. So, that being said, let's get those likes up, fam. Let's get those likes to a thousand, man. This is crazy stuff, y'all. So my final thoughts on the situation, man, is Christopher Duncan knows what happened to Jamie, but he don't want to say because if he do, his career is over. He ain't going to be able to make no money. He ain't going to be able to do anything. You know? He's not going to be able to do anything. And um, it's just something that he have to live with and uh, take to his grave the fact that he knew what happened to Jamie, but he never told the public. And that's sad because I'm sure he knows because he just told us if he find out, he won't tell us. He won't tell, say anything. You know? So, hey, it is what it is, man. Um, if you haven't already, consider clicking the like button to show your support for the stream and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you appreciate the work that I've done in this live stream. If you think this work was good, if you think I broke it down, click that like button, right? Give a few shout outs here on the Cash App. Um, if you like my work and you want to support, you can hit the Cash App. Dollar sign Ringo TV Raw is pinned up in the chat. It's right there uh, pretty much on the screen as well because your support is what keeps the lights on. It keeps everything functioning. It keeps us making great content. Give a few shout outs here. Shout out to Sharon for the 10 on the Cash App. Teresa for the 5. Peter for the 5.99. Donna for the 5. Sheila for the 5. And Regina for the 10. Regina for the 10. Appreciate you for sponsoring the show, um, supporting the content. Um, yeah, hopefully we can get some more interviews to uh, pretty much talk about because you would think that in today's day there would be multiple actors and musicians and artists that would be talking in interviews about Jamie, but they're not. Why? Why they're not? Why they're not talking about Jamie? Because they can't. They're under control from the industry, y'all. The industry told them, look, you can't say nothing. We don't want to see you on camera. If you do, you're done. And it is what it is, man. So, hey, um, we're going to get up on out of here, man. Um, shout out to Mark for the $4. Mark for the $4. And uh, Lively, Lively Cuts for the 5 Appreciate you. All right. Um, this is crazy, man. Who else in the industry knows what's happening to Jamie and won't speak? Because Christopher speaks. Listen, even though he didn't tell us what happened to Jamie, he's telling us what happened to Jamie but without telling us. Without telling us, he told us. That's how crazy this is. He's telling us without telling us. And he's going to keep it in the dark because, again, they paying him to do this. They paying him, y'all. You know? Um, let me see. Did I shout out Christopher? I'm not sure. Shout out to Christopher. Christopher T for the five. I'm not sure if I shouted you out already. I'm just checking. Your name just popped up. And uh, shout out to Farah. Farah for the 10. And I think I shouted out Mark for the four. I think I did. Um, anyway, y'all, we're going to get up on out of here. We're going to be back in the morning with more. Um, appreciate everybody sponsoring the show, supporting the stream, everybody in the clouds. You know what I'm saying? Be safe out there. Appreciate everybody getting the show uh, to a thousand likes. Um, when you get the shows to a thousand likes, that pushes the video and the algorithm heavy. You know what I'm saying? It just pushes the video out there so all eyes can pretty much start to see the videos. When you have low likes, 
it tells YouTube that you really don't like the show and you don't think nobody should watch the show. And uh, what YouTube does is they don't they don't move your video. They keep it dormanted in the dark somewhere. So uh, when you uh, click the like button, hopefully because you actually like the show, you know, not necessarily just to to click the button, but because you actually like some people normally click the like button when the show ends. You know what I'm saying? That's just their tradition. Some people at the beginning, some people in the middle. But those of you that know me, I know you click the like button as soon as you walk in. People that may be new to my channel, you're not familiar with my work, then I understand. Um, if you're new to the channel and you want to get to know what I'm about, what I do, and so on and so forth, we have a channel introduction video that's on the main page of my profile, which is an a tr a, uh, introduction video that pretty much lets you know what you get on this platform. You know, the kind of content that I make. So it's important to check out that video in your own time. And that way uh, you get a better understanding of me. I will be back on camera soon. I'm doing a lot of work within the studio and around the crib. Because um, a lot of times people see my content. They're like, you're not on camera. What do you look like? I got videos on my platform of what I look like already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got a whole studio. You know what I'm saying? We do videos in the studio. Full seven camera setup, fam. You know what I mean? The dopest live shows ever on YouTube, fam. It is what it is. I'm just getting some things situated in the background, man. A lot of stuff I got going on. So, again, everybody in the clouds that's supporting that that is up at this time, you know what I mean? Peace and blessings to everybody in the chat. Salute to everybody in New York, BK, in the building. You ever done know what it is? You know what I mean? Y'all be safe out there. Um, All the people that are on the 9 to 5, you know what I'm saying? Heading to work, the graveyard shift, overnight, the truckers, you know, the people in the warehouses, whatever the case is, all the, the people in Home Depot that is working the overnight shift, you know what I'm saying? Salute to everybody out there on the 9 to 5 grind, hustling, doing what you got to do to survive in these streets. You know what I mean? Be safe out there. Keep an eye on your surroundings. Uh, rep the most high. Focus on your health and fitness. You know, always be thankful for your, your life. Um, be thankful for your limbs, your ability to see, walk, talk, use your hands. Be thankful to God Almighty for that. It's a very important practice to happen, to have. And uh, if you, uh, if your mom is still living, call your mom and tell her that you love her. And your father too. Right? So uh, we're going to get on out of here. So y'all take care. We'll be back in the morning with more content. And uh, it is what it is. Let me see. Hold on a second. I think another Super Chat cash app came in. Hold on a second. Let me see. Um, let me see. Fernandez. Shout out to Fernandez for the 10 on the cash app. Fernandez. B. B. Fernandez. Shout out to you for the support. Anyway, y'all. We're going to get out of here. Y'all stay safe. Ringo TV Reactions, the best reaction every channel on YouTube. Hands down, we're number one. You already done know what it is. I'm out, fam. Peace. We out of here. If you like our content, consider supporting via Cash App at dollar sign Ringo TV Raw. Become a patron on Patreon.com for exclusive video content not shown on YouTube. You could also support through PayPal at paypal.me slash ringotvraw. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new content. Follow me on Instagram at ringotvraw. This is Ringo TV Reactions. The only channel on YouTube bringing you the truth 100% raw. And uncut. I'm out. Peace.